Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are adding another video in the miscellaneous series. In this video, we will be talking about Poisson equation in the dy Haeckel approximation limit. Poisson equation is useful in electrostatics and electrokinetics. I thought of making a video on it because it will be helpful for the people who are working on these two fields. Poisson equation in the dy Haeckel approximation limit is a kind of concise equation or a reduced form of equation or you can say an approximation so that it becomes analytically solvable. So this particular equation has an analytical solution and hence you can try to solve it analytically and then we'll be working with ComSol so then you can actually compare the results but Poisson equation will not have this approximated form that particular equation is a non-linear coupled equation. In the next video, we'll be talking about complete form of Poisson equation. But for today's discussion, we, 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 we actually concise our discussion with this approximation limit. So this is the first step to learn electrokinetics. So let me just try to explain you what exactly happens by the solution of this differential equation. So suppose you have a channel where the walls are charged. Now those charged are charged are electrostatic charge that means immobile charge and this kind of charge appears in dielectric material on the surface. At the bulk it may be electroneutral but at the surface it has residual charge and that residual charge leads to a potential that you can say wall potential or the surface potential. So this particular case, in this particular case, we assume there is a surface negative charge and you have a liquid or an electrokinetic uh, uh, a solution inside this channel and what will happen whenever you have this negative surface charge, the, Im the ions from the solution will adhere on this surface. So initially the positive ions will be attracted because of the electrostatic attraction force. So you will have uh, you, you will have an additional concentration of positive ions near the walls and as you go away the concentration of positive ion will reduce and at the bulk it will be constant throughout. So because of this redistribution of the ions you have a kind of potential developed near the surface and that potential is called zeta potential. So let us try to work on this particular equation. As you can see, this is a second order differential equation and in second order differential equation, you need to have two boundary conditions to solve it. For this particular case, we have taken these two boundary conditions that we have taken two walls and in both the walls, we have put a certain zeta, pot certain surface potential, say minus 20 millivolt. And we need to solve in this solution space. So in between the shaded region, that will be our solution space. So we'll be creating this uh, kind of geometry in ComSol. So initially, we go to mathematics module. And in the mathematics module, we have classical PDEs. I have already talked about this particular PDEs. So here you can see there are different classical partial differential equations like Laplace equation and the second one is Poisson equation. So we create, we click on Poisson equation and we go to study and we click on stationary study because as you see from the Poisson equation there is no time dependent term. That's why we go ahead with the stationary study. Now initially let us create our geometry, let us work in the domain of micrometer because this electrokinetic phenomenon are very much prevalent in pores and nano micro channels and that's why it's better to work in the domain of micrometer. Now we create a simple rectangular geometry, suppose the height is 10 and say the width is 20. So some something like this we create. Now what we need to do is we need to initially we need to define the lambda. As you see in the equation we have a lambda which is called d by layer thickness 
and what exactly the device layer thickness is i'll put a link in the description box the wikipedia has defined this particular device uh, device length very nicely i'll put that link so that you can understand you can read and understand the device length uh, most of you already know but if you forget it it is better to uh, have a read uh, and understand this device length so yeah let us go ahead so here is yeah uh, we have created the geometry now in the Poisson equation so you can see uh, when you go to the Poisson equation the equation has this form so we have to actually define what is the unit of u and what is the unit of the source term so this f term will be uh, defining we can actually define this f term so here you can see in the f term we basically have phi by lambda square where this phi is the dependent variable so here you can see the dependent variable is u so for our case this u will be equivalent to the phi so initially uh, we know the uh, the unit of phi is voltage and obviously the device length has a unit of the dimension of length that is say meter so initially you need to change this units so it is asking for the unit of the dependent variable so the unit would be voltage so we write capital v here and the unit of the source term so here you can see the source term means the right hand term and in the right hand term you have phi by lambda square so phi has a unit of v voltage and lambda square is the meter square so here the meter to the power minus 2 is already given so we need to add 1 I mean multiply by V because uh, the unit is voltage per meter square or voltage meter to the power minus 2 so we have defined the units appropriately now we need to define our equation if you see in the left hand side you have the gradient uh, divergence of grad U that means the Laplacian of u if the c is constant so we take c outside but inherently it has a negative sign but in our equation we don't have any negative sign in, uh, sign in the left hand side so what we do is we define c equal to minus 1 then this minus 1 and minus if you multiply it will be plus 1 and this particular thing will be your Laplacian of phi which we need now in the right hand side f it would be phi by lambda square so let us define the lambda because we have not defined the lambda say lambda is lam so lam is say it remains in nanometer or micrometer range so for the time being we define it one micrometer so yeah we have defined this lambda as one micrometer so in this equation now we can write u by lamb square yeah so this is the source term and you know this u is coming from here because the dependent variable is u and that's why I am writing u so the equation is now defined now what I need to do I need to do I need to define my boundary conditions so this is a constant potential boundary condition that is a Dirichlet boundary condition so I click here I click these two walls and as you can see in the presentation file we defined it as 20 millivolt or 0 0.02 millivolt minus 0 0.02 millivolt I mean 20 millivolt so these two boundary conditions are also defined we have defined the equation appropriately and now let us create the mesh so let us go ahead with extra fine mesh yeah this is not good yeah extremely fine yeah this is good for learning purpose now I guess all the things are defined appropriately let us run the simulation I hope this will run yeah the simulation is done now you can see how exactly the profile is minus 20 at the wall you have minus 20 and as you go towards the bulk the potential reduces 
like if I click here I will look at the potential so here the potential is say minus 2.69 into 10 to the power minus 4 similarly anywhere you click if you click somewhere near the wall you will see like it is reaching towards 0 point minus 0 point 0 0.02 you can also look at the profile so for looking at the profile what i need to do i need to go to the data set create a 2d cut line and in 2d cut line let us say take a section along uh, x equal to 10 so we put x equal to 10 micrometer we put the point 2 also x equal to 10 and y varies from 0 to 10 so if i click on plot yeah it has been plotted now what i do i go to the result take a 2d plot group and uh, it's not 2d 1d plot group in 1d plot group i take a line graph now the in 1d plot group the data will come from the cut line 2d and in the line graph we plot u so you can see this is how the potential looks like at the bulk you have near to zero potential at two corners or two walls you have minus 20 or minus 0 0.02 and then it varies and in both the from both the ends it reaches near to zero and this is how your solution will look like now as i mentioned this particular equation has an analytical solution you can try uh, solving it analytically with the boundary conditions i have chosen and you can actually validate this against this comsol simulation it will be a good learning thing so today i uh, stop here before i stop i would like to tell you that we have initiated a service where we help you developing your research problem if you want to avail this service you write to me in the email id given in the description box i will write back to you and we will set up video calls to assist you developing your model thank you